Hello creative people, today we are going to build a curtain menu. So at first this is a pretty simple menu, so sorry for the UI, but it's just to show you the animation at actually. Yeah. After that you can just do the CSS that you want. So a curtain menu will just disappear in small screen, okay, like that. And you can use a button to open it and close it, okay? So this is a pretty simple example and I will show you how to do that with React. And as you can see, you, we will use the width of the browser. So let's code it. I will put the source code in description and then you can style it as you want. So here we are in VS code in a pretty simple create React app application. And we just have a component folder with curtain menu folder and inside it I will create curtain menu.js and RFC tab, and I will just import it in our app root component. So curtain menu from dot slash component slash curtain curtain, and I can just put it right there. So yes, great, great. So uh, right now we do have nothing, but we can start to, uh, to code it right there. So I just put the CSS right there because the CSS is not really important. I will just explain uh, some, some animation, but uh, yeah, we are not going to cut the CSS right there. We are just going to focus on the logic part. So I will just zoom it. Okay, and I will use with React, use state and use effect. Okay, after that, I will just take my curtain menu.css. Okay, my styles and my little icon import menu from dot slash menu dot svg. Okay, great. Um, right there, we can just create the UI first. So a button with the class name of floating button, floating btn. Okay, and inside it, I will just put my image, my menu image. Okay, that's nice. So we just have our button right there. Uh, it's just an absolute positioned uh, button, okay? And below it, we do want our navigation. So nav with the class of, um, no, just nav to begin with. So just a nav and inside it, I will put a button with the class of close curtain, okay? And just the X inside it. And then I want three, um, three links. So home, services and contact. Okay, so if you want to duplicate elements, you just need to press shift, alt and arrow down and it will just work. Okay, uh, indeed when you are on VS Code. So right now we need to create some state, toggle nav and set toggle nav. And it will start with false. Okay, because we don't want to see the nav uh, if we don't click on the button. All right, so after that I will... Uh, take another state, we create another state, check width and set check width equal use state window dot inner width. Okay, so when we arrive on our application, it will just take the width of our window. Okay, so we can just, mm, just change it. Uh, whenever we are going to resize our, our window, we need to change that value. Okay, but if we just go on an application on your phone or whatever, uh, it will work. But if we resize it on a desktop, we need to uh, change the state accordingly. Okay, so we are going to use use effect. You put some uh, empty array right there and you just create your add event listener, which one resize whenever you are going to resize the window and so whenever you are going to resize the window you are going to change the width set check width with window with the current value of window dot inner width you see okay so pretty nice uh, pretty nice so um, tac, 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 um, one thing uh, we can improve right there is just to create the um, um, for example check check func Sorry, I don't have much inspiration. So check funk. So whenever check funk is triggered, up, up, right there. 
So why did I do that? Why did I do that? Well, you want to remove your event listener if uh, your component is destroyed. Uh, you want to clean uh, things up. How to clean things up with use effect? You need to return something in your use effect uh, hook when you're um, callback right there. You need to return a function. We call that a cleanup function. And if we return that, we are going to win window that remove event listener, which one resize and check func. Link to check func. Okay. So this is pretty uh, pretty important for uh, memory purpose when you are using some set interval or event listener or set timeout or whatever, you need to think about the cleanup function. Okay. So yeah, now, now you can clean it because we just create some function there and you can just, you can just clean it right there. Okay. So you, you can, if you want, just log that, the, the width. So if I resize it, ah, oh, indeed, it will not show up. So I will just put it right there. Okay. So you can just um, log it, you see? So why this is disappearing right there? Because in our CSS, I've put some media queries, okay? So when we are under 900 pixel, it will just transform translate uh, X uh, minus, minus, and uh, right there. So yeah, so you understand that with our media query, uh, this is just showing and hiding, show, hide, okay? So now we do need uh, to make our button work and we do need to add something else too. So we do need to add, to hide our floating BTN whenever we are above 900 pixels. So check width and inferior to 900 and then we can return that button. So only when we are under 900 and after that, I want to do the same for my BTN right, BTN right there. Okay. So why this is not working yet? Yeah, because you do need to add the parentheses right there. Okay. Uh, so sorry, it's not very, very readable, but uh, you can just do it like that if you want w without the parentheses. Okay. You can do it like that. Well, it's not really readable. I'm trying to put some shift alt F with prettier, but well, okay. But I think you understand when we are below 900 pixel, it will, it will uh, show up. Okay. But if we are above, it will just hide. It's not there anymore. Okay. There, are, there is no button right there and there is no button right there too. You see, but if I go below it, uh, I see that button and I see also, also, sorry, that red button. So we need to add some on click to be able to see it. So on click equal toggle nav uh, func. Did I create it already or not? No, I did not. So I can just create it like right there. Const toggle nav func equal uh, this. And we are just going to toggle, um, toggle the toggle nav right there. Okay. So toggle nav contrary of um, toggle nav. Okay. 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 That's nice. That's nice. So now if I click on it, if I click on it, it won't do anything because we need to change the class name of the nav conditionally. Okay. So class name equal toggle nav is true. If it's true, I will uh, send active. And if it's not, I will just um, apply nothing. So toggle nav right there. Okay. So I can explain now everything. Okay. So just test it. Yes, that's working. And, and then, then we need to add it there, the unclick on the red button too. Oh, I swear this is, <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> button, button, okay, close, close, unclick. So if you click on the first button, it will trigger the toggle nav func and it will just show our navigation with that conditional rendering, okay? And if you click again on the red button, it will trigger nav uh, again, okay? And you will see the other button. So this is a simple curtain menu. What was really important, uh, really fun, I would say, <laughs> if you find it fun, uh, was to use use effect to add some advantage snare on resize and to check for the winner.inner width. 
and then to render to render something when we are only um, um, under under 900 pixel. That was pretty nice to do with React, and I think this is a pretty nice exercise. All right, all right, great. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you. And I hope you understood me, and I hope my accent is getting better. And well, see you next time. Bye.